you amazing people you this is mrs berger and i'm gonna review the unit three study guide so that you are fully prepared for your unit three assessment so let's dive in all right over here our study guide so i have the two things i need i have my study guide i have the desmos calculator because this is going to be my best friend with ratios Number one says, which of the following ratios shows this comparison of the number of circles in set B to the number of circles in set A? I like to make myself a little key. So remember, the final sentence is going to tell us the order we have to put our ratios in. So we want circles in set B. So B circles compared to, right, two circles in set A. So set A circles so now it's literally counting right set b has one two three four five circles that number is going to go first two set a has one two three circles so our ratio is five two three the second one right there mark it with the oval five two three we well, can't get easier than that now can it all right, let's try this one. It says, Ross has a bag of 50 marbles. Inside, there are 17 red marbles and 15 green marbles. What is the ratio of green to red? So again, they want green first, then red. So I make myself a key, green to red. Then I go back in the word problem to find my important information. So I look, there's 15 green, okay, 15, two, there's up here 17 red 17 i don't really care that there's 50 marbles that's kind of just extra information so 15 to 17 or i can do this one 15 colon 17. so it's that last one right there all right not so bad moving along i gotta love a ratio man all right here we go choose alls all right let's look at this one it says, in the image below, which of the following shows an equivalent relationship of shirts to total pieces? So we want shirts to total. All right, so let's count. I have one, two, three, four, five, six shirts. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven total pieces. So I'm going to choose all the ones that say six to eleven. So I have six, the word two, 11, that first guy. I have six colon 11, that guy, but I don't see six over 11. Okay, but it wants me to choose all of the equivalent ones. I like to use the decimal strategy, right? But there's other things we could do. We could use the decimal strategy. We could use common multiplier. We could use the butterfly effect. We could use double number lines. I personally like the decimal ones because it's just kind of easy peasy. So I'm going to do shirts divided by total. It's not really a fraction, but I can make it in fractional form. Well, I mean, you know what I mean? Like, just go with me on this one. I jacked that up, but that's okay. Let's keep rolling. So six divided by 11. Shirts divided by total. So I'm going to try this next one. 12 divided by 22. Well, look, I get that same decimal, which means 12 over 22 is equivalent to 6 over 11. So let's try 11 over 6. Nope, not that one. 5 divided by 11. Nope, not that one. Same numbers, but no. Let's try this last one, 18 divided by 33. Well, looky there, same one. So I found all of the equivalents. So use those strategies to make sure you find the ones that are equivalent ratios, not just the easy ones to spot. And that decimal strategy is just a super convenient, easy peasy one. Moving along, friends, moving along. All right, number four says, the chart below shows the relationship between the number of pencils purchased and the cost of pencils. What is the cost of 30 pencils? Okay, so five pencils is 60 cents, 10 pencils is $1.20, 15 is $1.80, 20 pencils is 240. There's a lot of different ways I could solve this problem. I could say, okay, well, 15 is half of 30. So if 15 pencils is $1.80, then I could take $1.80 times two sets and I would get $3.60. So I could do that strategy, right? Or I could set this up really like a proportion and I like to make myself a key. 
pencils over cost. So let's use just 20. So if 20 pencils is $2.40, 30 pencils, and that goes on top, would be how much money? So if I set it up like a proportion with a missing piece, I can use that strategy loop and circle. So I multiply the two numbers diagonal from each other. I divide by the number diagonal from what's missing. Let's see if I get $3.60. So 30 times 240 is 72. I bring that answer down divided by 20 and look at that $3.60. So two totally different strategies, but same answer, right? So set it up like a proportion or use with the information that you have and figure out maybe a common multiplier that you could use. Loop and circle, it's our best friend with proportions. All right, so let's look at number five. Number five says identify the unit rate. Unit rate means per one. So when I'm trying to find the unit rate, I want to know how much is one thing. So if three things is $15 and six things is $30 and nine things is $45 and 12 things is $60, really I'm just trying to find the rule of the table. So to figure out what I'm multiplying by, I work backwards. I'm going to divide. 60 divided by 12 is 5. Let's see if that's true for 45 divided by 9. 5. 30 divided by 6? 5. 15 divided by 3? 5. So the rule of the table is times 5, which means the unit rate is $5. If three things are $15, one thing would be $5. That makes sense. Unit rate per 1. All right, it says determine the cost of six items. Okay, so again, I'm going to use that strategy loop and circle to find a missing number in a proportion. I'm going to multiply the numbers that are diagonal, divide by the number across from what's missing. So 6 times 14, 84. Bring that answer down. Divide it by 4. $21 is what's missing. Right? Other ways I could do that also. I see here that I have a unit rate. One thing is $3.50. So I could just take $3.50 times six things, and again, I get 21. So it doesn't really matter what strategy you use. You just want to use a strategy. Right? Right. All right, let's go to number seven. It says there's a proportional, is, is there a proportional relationship based on the situation below? All right, Mr. Smith's class is having a pizza party. Pizza Hut offers $5 delivery and charges $10 for each medium pizza. The ratio table below represents the cost Y per number of pizzas ordered X. Okay, so let's see about this one. Is this proportional is what we're trying to figure out. Well, again, think of all those strategies. We have common multiplier, convert to decimal, cross multiply, double number line. So if one pizza costs $15, and two pizzas cost $25, and three pizzas cost $35, and four pizzas cost $45, is that proportional? Well, let's see. Let's do one divided by 15. I get this crazy decimal, right? Well, let's try two divided by 25. You see how these don't match? If they do not match, then no. There's no constant of proportionality. In order for there to be a constant of proportionality, everyone has to have the same rule. It's just a fancy way of saying, is there a rule for the ratio table? And this is not, because one times 15 is 15, but two times 15 is not 25. It would be 30, which means these have different rules, so no. Anytime something charges a delivery fee, then that's not going through that origin, right? So no, not proportional. Well, speaking of going through that origin, remember the origin is this middle part right here, zero, zero, right? The ordered pair for the origin is right here at zero, zero. It has a zero X and a zero five, Y. So is this graph proportional? No, the graph is not proportional because remember, in order for there to be a proportional relationship at the graph, I have to be a straight line that starts or goes through that origin. This starts at zero, 01, which means no, there is not a proportional relationship 
that exist on that graph. Not a proportional. That's all we have to look for. Straight line going through the origin. All right, I, I love the ones that look like this. It says, what statement below is true based on the given ratio in the image? So I'm, let's write the ratio. It all looks like it's stars to circles. Oh, that one's circles to stars. But let's write, let's do stars to circles. So there's three stars and there's six circles. So we want to know if, which one of these is true, right? Which one of these has that same ratio. So this says, the first one, there's six stars for every three circles. Well, no. There's more circles than stars, so that one cannot be correct. There are three stars for every three circles. Well, no. Again, there's more circles than stars, so that one cannot be correct. There are two stars for every one circle. Well, again, no. There's more circles than stars, so that one cannot be correct. So let's look at this one. There are two circles for every one star. Well, let's see. Two circles, one star. Two circles, one star. Two circles, one star. So yes. So sometimes just eliminating the wrong choices will get us to that right one. All right, we're getting there, friends. We are getting there. It right, says, William purchased 12 large pizzas at Pizza Zone. The cost of the pizzas were $144. What table represents this situation? So 12 pizzas is $144. Well, let's figure out how much one pizza would be. So we take 144 divided by 12. So each pizza is going to be $12. Well, we can eliminate D because this says one pizza is $10, so we know that's not true. We can eliminate C. It has that one pizza is $12, but also that two is 12 and three is 12 and four is 12. And I don't know about you, but you're not getting four pizzas for $12, so no. All right, so let's look up here. They both have one pizza for $12, one pizza for $12. So we know the rule, and for the first one is that times 12. So. Let's go back to that decimal strategy, right? I think that one's just the easiest when we're working through these problems. So let's do one divided by 12. In order for the whole table to be proportional, we have to check every single column because maybe some might be, some might not be following that rule. So we really wanna check all of them. So let's check B. Three pizzas is $24. Three divided by 24. Nope, different decimal. So no, it's not that one. Well, let's just make sure the test makers didn't make a mistake and that this answer A works. Two divided by 24, yep. Six divided by 72, yep. Nine divided by 108, yep. So A is our correct answer because each column gives us that same decimal. A decimal strategy, I'm telling you guys, will just work every time. We don't have to think about our all of our facts. All right. Oh, this is a big one. Oh, geez. So, so, oh, wow, it's the whole page. Okay, here we go. It says, select all correct answers. Okay, so that's a key that maybe there's more than one. All right, it says, which represents the following situation? John receives $6 per week for allowance if he completes all of his chores. Okay, so $6 per week. So let's try the graphs first. $6 per week, so we have one divided by six. One divided by six is that one. Two divided by 12, same decimal. Five divided by 30, same decimal. 10 divided by 60, same decimal. So this one works, but there could be more than one. So let's continue to check the other ones. Again, one divided by six. Well, actually, I'm gonna show you on this one that you can go the other way. You could do six divided by one, I get six. 12 divided by two, I get six. 24 divided by three, I get eight, so no. All right, so it kinda of doesn't matter. As long as you flow in the same direction, you can divide either top divided by bottom or bottom divided by top. Doesn't matter, to be honest with you. One divided by six, okay. Two divided by 12, that works. Five divided by 24, well, no. All right, so now let's look to see if we can figure out which of these lovely 
graphs show that in one week he earns six dollars so look at here on our table the x is one the y is six when the x is two the y is 12 so we're really gonna have to zoom in here so we want when the x is one the y has to be six right here well that surely does not work oops it zoomed me out all right let's look at it up here when the x is one right here the y needs to be six which is right there well no because that's at zero six so no if he works zero weeks he's not gonna get six dollars so it looks here at one let's zoom in one all the way up to six yes this one works when it's two it's all the way up past the 10 to 12 then yes this one would work whoops right there boom found it Woo! that was a long one all right guys we're almost halfway there we're getting there okie dokie this calculator super handy right all right number 12 says sierra needs new film for her polaroid camera use unit rate to determine which of the following is the best deal this is something you really do in life right what is the best deal so 60 sheets for 34.88 we want to figure out what's the cost for one sheet so we're going to do 64.88 divided by those 60 sheets so it's about 58 cents per one sheet well let's check the next one 32 dollars and 48 cents divided by 50 sheets at 64 cents so boop, not that one that one's more expensive at this point we're gonna let it go we still right now have a current winner this first one well let's see if it's 18 dollars and 60 cents divided by 30 sheets nope still more expensive so no and let's try that last one 12 dollars and 99 cents divided by 20 sheets 65 cents a sheet uh no so the best deal is really this one at 58 cents per sheet buying 60 is actually the better deal the less you'll pay per sheet all righty here we go janaya worked four days a week for eight hours a day she earned a total of 392 dollars what was her hourly rate okay so again, this is a unit rate question. But before we can figure out her hourly weight rate, we have to figure out how many hours did she work. So she did four days times eight hours a day. So she worked 32 hours. We're gonna take what she earned, 392, divided by how many hours she worked, and she's making $12.25 per hour, right? Per hour. All right, so number 14, it says, is there a proportional relationship based on the situation below? Amazon is selling iPhone chargers for $15 with no delivery fee. That means one would be 15, two would be 30, three would be 45. As long as there's that, not that delivery fee, then yes, this is a proportional relationship because the rule is times 15, which means 15 is the constant of proportionality. If you ordered zero chargers, you'd be charged zero dollars. One would be 15, two would be 30, three would be 45, and so on and so on. So you're looking for that no delivery fee, right? Okay, is there a proportional, relation, proportional relationship based on the graph? I'm looking for two things. Does it start at zero, zero? Yes. Is it a straight line? Yes, which means yes, there's a constant of proportionality, right? Easy peasy, I love those ones. Okay, more tables down here. All right, so it says, which of the following tables represents a proportional relationship between X and Y with a ratio of three to 15? So they want X to Y at three to 15. So for every three X's, there's 15 Y's. All right, so I can eliminate B very quickly because this has three X's is just one Y, so we know that that's not true. All right, so let's look at the decimal, 3 divided by 15. 3 divided by 15. So we're looking for that 0 0.2, right? So I'm just going to check these ones to see. Mark only one oval, so I know once I find it, that's the one I want. So let's check this one. 1 divided by 5. All right, that works. 2 divided by 10. Okay, that works. 6 divided by 30. 
Yep, that works. If I check the last one, 8 divided by 40, that one works too, which means boom, I found it first try. All of them gave me that same decimal, which means those ones are proportional. They're equivalent ratios. More tables! Joshua makes $10 an hour shoveling snow. Which of the following tables represents the proportional relationship between the hours spent shoveling, X, and the money he earns, Y? So X is the hours, Y is the money. So for every one hour, he makes $10, right? So if he makes $10 in one hour, would he make $10 in two hours? No, we can eliminate that one. This says he works 10 hours and makes $2. Uh, no, the Y is the money. You work 10 hours, you don't want $2, so no. Look at this crazy one. He works 30 hours for $3. Um, no, remember, Y is the money. So if he works three hours, would he get 30? Well, yeah, that's times 10. If he works six hours, does he get 60? Well, yeah, that's times 10. If he does nine hours, does he get 90? Well, yes, that's times 10. So boom just like that. So this one was tricky because they just flip flop these, right? But this one, 30 hours for $3. This one, three hours for $30. So make sure you're really paying attention to that word problem part. Okie dokie pokies, we're getting there. All right, it says the graph below shows the relationship between cups of pasta to cups of sauce, right? So right here, cups of pasta. For one cup of pasta, you would use two cups of sauce. For two cups of pasta, you use four. For three cups of pasta, you use six, right? So our relationship for pasta to sauce would be one to two, right? For every one cup of pasta, you have two cups of sauce. So we're trying to figure out which of these tables would match that graph. So a couple we can eliminate off the bat. Pasta and sauce being equal, no. It's a one to two relationship, not two to two. Is there more pasta than sauce? No. We want one cup of pasta to two cups of sauce, so we can eliminate that one. This one also, more pasta than sauce, no. We need more sauce than pasta, so that doesn't work, which really just leaves me with that only one that makes sense right? For two cups, there's, for sorry, two cups of pasta, there's four cups of sauce. Well, we know that right here. Two cups of pasta, four cups of sauce. For three cups of pasta, there's six. So our rule is times two. Two times two is four. Three times two is six. Four times two is eight. So that rule times two comes really handy dandy when we're doing these. All right, friends, couple more. It says, the animal shelter uses three cans of cat food for every five cans of dog food. All right, so cat food to dog food. So three cans of cat food to five cans of dog food. All right, if a proportional relationship exists between the number of cans of cat food and dog food used, select the correct value for the blank in the table to represent the relationship, nine cans of cat food would be how many cans of dog food? All right, well, there's not a table that I can see for this question, so we're just gonna fill in the blank. So again, I like to write them as decimals. Cat food to dog food. Three cans of cat food to five cans of dog food. Well, that would equal nine cans of cat food to how much dog food? So let's just use that common multiplier strategy. We could also use loop and circle because we have a missing value. So I think to myself, three times what would give me nine? Well, times three. Three times three is nine. If you don't know that and you're not great with your facts, work backwards. Do nine divided by three. Oh, okay, times three. So if I times the top by three, I have to times the bottom by three. And again, if you're not good with your facts, no judgment. Do five times three. So you need 15 cans of dog food. Cans of dog food. Boom, nailed it. 15 cans of dog food. Let me show you how you could have used loop and circle, right? Again, we loop the two numbers across from each other. We multiply five times nine. We take that answer down divided by the circle. 
divided by three, oops, put it in the right spot, again, 15. So both strategies work fine. It's just whatever works best for you. All right, let's erase this so I can work on this problem 20 right here. All right, problem 20 says, the table below represents the relationship between packs of cookies and the number of cookies. Determine and describe the unit rate for the number of packs cookies per pack. All right, so again, I'm just trying to figure out what's the rule of the table. To find the rule, I work backwards. If four packs is 24 cookies, I take 24 cookies divided by four, there's six cookies per pack, right? Let's do 36 divided by six, six cookies. 48 divided by eight, six cookies. So in one pack, there would be six cookies, right? Cookies per pack. Cookies divided by the pack. And that'll give you your unit rate. I think that was the last ones. We made it. All right. Well, we have made it to the end. If you've made it to the end, you're awesome sauce. Make sure you're ready for that test. Use those strategies. Use that calculator. Do your best and have a lovely, lovely day.